What's up, everybody? Welcome back to episode number two of Big Dan Feasts. And you can probably hear me better. I got a microphone this week, guys. Uh, I really want to thank you guys for watching the first episode. Uh, really appreciate it. It means a lot that you guys are actually taking the time if you actually watch the whole video. Even if you watch 20 seconds of it, I still like you. Uh, but thanks for all the comments and feedback I got. I'm going to take those comments and suggestions and work them into the show. Uh, but, so let's, today we're going to get back to what I, what I talked about at the beginning of the first episode. Is I like hunting, fishing, outdoor stuff and all that. And it's August. So that means two things are happening. Dallas Cowboys football is right around the corner. Go Cowboys. And number two is hunting season is right around the corner. So in like less than a month for some people, uh, hunting season will be kicking off. So they're probably wondering, what's all this? So right here, I've got a very special guest for you today, and this is all going to make sense to you. Uh, my good buddy from the Little, Her Little Arrowhead Ranch in Tilden, Texas, Cliff Retzloff. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Cliff. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for coming on. Right here. Like, like I said, I'm going to bring on my buddies. I'm going to bring on people to try the food and all that. So... Cliff, you're the first official guest of Big Dad Feast. All right, good deal. So you're uh, excited. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I work with Cliff. We work, me and Cliff worked together about, what, five years? A little more than five years now. Uh, I've been hunting at his place, which is what all this is. So let's just tell the people, uh, at the beginning of the video, you should see uh, the video package that I put together of all the deer and stuff that, that Cliff's very proud of there at Little Arrowhead Ranch. And uh, I've been there a couple of times, a few times. And with my dad, my brother, everybody, we have a real good time. It's a beautiful place. It's fun. And they got some quality, quality, quality deer out there. And uh, they got fishing. They got it all. So I'm going to let Cliff tell you about it. And uh, he's going to tell you why he's here. And, well, of course he's going to cook with me. So go ahead, Cliff. Tell, tell the people why you're here. Well, that's right, Big Dan. One of the main things you said there was quality. If you're looking for quality South Texas white-tailed deer, we got it. This is where you need to come hunt. Uh... Whether you, you've been hunting all your life, whether you're just getting started, or whether you want to bring your kids out, we got everything for you. Uh, like Big Dan said, we got hunting, we got fishing, I got stock tanks uh, full of bass and catfish, big old catfish. Big catfish. Also, uh, there, there will be a picture of the catfish <laughs> that I caught uh, over there. Big bass, big catfish. Uh, we do dove hunts, quail hunts, uh, but like I say, we specialize uh, our operation on South Texas native white-tailed deer. Uh, and like I say, it's August, so uh, we're getting ready for the upcoming hunt hunting season. Uh, so a couple things here. Uh, this weekend, uh, we will be at the Hunters Extravaganza this weekend in San Antonio, Texas, August 16th through the 18th. Uh, so people start uh, can start booking their hunts for this coming season. That's at the Freeman Expo Hall. Freeman Expo Hall behind the Freeman Coliseum. Yeah. Now, a couple things that we're doing here on this show to help my hunters for this, this upcoming season. I have four Academy gift cards here that we will be raffling off. Giveaways. Giveaways. First official Big Daffy's giveaway, folks. So... Uh, he's, like he said, he's got four $50 Academy gift cards to get you ready for this hunting season coming up, whether it's buying camo or buying ammo or whatever, helping Hunting you buy a new rifle for all, you know? So uh, the way you're going to do that is you're going to go to Instagram. You're going to go to Instagram. You're going to give me a follow at Big Dan Feast. I will put the link in the comments or in the bio. And uh, you're going to go to at Big Dan Feast on Instagram. You're going to tag two friends. And you're gonna follow the page, and I will randomly select and I'm gonna put it in a hopper. It's like a computer program that does this stuff. I'm gonna put it in a hopper, put your names in a hopper, and I will message you, DM you, whatever if you want. And I will probably put the names up on the page as well. Uh, so I'll mail them to you, meet up with you, whatever. I, I don't know if I'm gonna know you or not, but uh, we will mail these to you if I have to. I'll meet, meet up with you to give. But uh, Cliff. And everybody at the Little Arrowhead Ranch, nice enough to give us basically $200 worth of Academy gift cards uh, to give away for you, the viewers, and to get you guys ready for this hunting season, or even if you're a fisherman, you know? So uh, go ahead, go to Big Dan Feast on Instagram, tag two of your friends, and, uh, and go ahead and check out 
Cliff, give him your uh, your Instagram handle. Okay. Give so, Cliff a like. So a few ways you can contact us is uh, with these gift packages. Uh, you'll be receiving obviously a fifty dollar Academy gift card. Uh, you'll be getting a, a decal. I'll get you a decal. <laughs> You'll be getting one of our uh, Little Arrowhead Ranch decals with it, and then I'll have one of my business cards in there also. Uh, this has my contact information. Uh, I'll put that up. It has our website on here, which is uh, littlearrowheadranch.com. Uh, you can go on there, look at the website. It has contact information. It has a lot more information on there about our facilities, uh, our hunting operation, pricing, uh, things like that. Um, so you can go on there, littleairbranch.com, uh, contact information here, phone number here, or like I say, come out and see us this weekend at the Hunters of Extravaganza, and uh, you'll get more information from us uh, that way. So yeah, so we really, really appreciate, you know, Cliff and the, everybody at Little, Little Arrowhead Ranch, and uh, so go check him out, get on, I'm going to put up his business card on the, on the video, but I'll put his info in the, in the description. Uh, and all the, all the ways to get a hold of them. So you get over there. It's a wonderful place. It's awesome. Me and my dad go. We have a good time and we have a blast. Uh, it's a family-run business, and they know what they're doing, folks. And they are there are some quality deer out there. And uh, yeah, I've seen some 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 deer that I've only seen on TV. You know. So get out. Go to the Hunter's Travaganza. Check Cliff out. Check out the little little Arrowhead Ranch. Cliff will be there all weekend, right? You'll be there all weekend? All weekend. So all there weekend. will be people in the booth ready to take care of you guys and get you guys set up with a with a dream hunt, basically. And like you said, whether you're a beginner, you're experienced, you know, whatever you want, they, they will find something for you. So Cliff and everybody over at the Little Arrowhead Ranch will take care of you. So with Cliff being here, I'm going to go ahead and it's, we're going to cook. So today's menu is going to be backstrap. So I've got the last piece of backstrap I have from the deer that I took over at Cliff's Place this week and over at the Little Arrowhead Ranch uh, from last season. So got that, I got it in the fridge, ready to go. We're gonna start cooking here in a minute. Uh, we're gonna do it two ways and uh, you're gonna see all that. I'll put up a picture of the, the deer that I shot there. And uh, I really, really, really need you guys to go over and take care of Cliff, go see him, go see him at the Hunter Stravaganza. Hit him up. What's your Instagram? You want to get a people? Uh, actually, on? our Instagram also on that Instagram page is uh, Little Bear Red Ranch also on Instagram. There you go. I'll, I'll put that. Some CS, I'll uh, put that in there as well. well. So yeah, go check out Cliff. Go to Hunter Stravaganza. Check it out. It's a good time. Uh, go talk to them and uh, go see what they got. So all right, guys, we're gonna get into the cooking. Cliff, you ready to cook? Let's get started. I'm excited. Let's do this. <laughs> all right. All right, folks. So we're gonna get the show on the road. So what I've got here is this is one half of the deer backstrap. Well, it's, there's two backstraps that you get out of a deer. This is one backstrap of the two cut in half, if that makes any sense to you. So what I did, uh, so there's like, when you get it, there's like a thicker end and a thinner end, right? And so the, the, the top end closest to the neck and, and all that, it's got, it's more meaty, right? So you've got, this is the, the top end. And then this is the back end closer to the butt. So it's a little more stringy and stuff. So we're going with that end, we're going to make some chicken fried steak. With the front end, which is, is this is basically the filet mignon of the deer. So we are going to, we're going to bacon wrap this. It's like the most traditional way I would think to cook it. Uh, personally, for me at least. So all we're going to do is we're going to bacon wrap this thing and we're going to put it on the grill and we're going to cook it and Thing with cooking deer, do not overcook this stuff. People are so freaked out about freaking blood. Don't be scared of blood, especially your deer. Uh, it's okay to have a little bit of redness in it. That's what you want because I mean, people, if I've had this stuff, you probably had it dry as hell. Plenty of time. Yeah, so this is way too good a quality meat to be screwing up. So we're gonna bacon wrap this and we're throwing it on the grill and it's pretty simple. And then We'll do, once I get that on the grill, we'll go ahead and do our uh, our chicken fried steak style. So, oh, right. so, I got me some bacon, just regular old bacon. I didn't have time to go to the meat market and get some good, good bacon, but this is a thicker cut bacon. Went down to old H-E-B, of course. So, what I've got 
The good old Tony's. Can you see that? Tony's. Uh, Tony Satrees is just a straight up Creole seasoning, right? So got a little bit of kick to it, not too much. So I'm just gonna season the backstrap itself, rub it in. And it's really your preference on how much heat you can take. I've taken off all the silver skin I could on the back strap, and that just helps with the tenderness and it's not so stringy. It's basically like when you pull the silver skin off of a uh, rack of pork ribs, you know, it just helps. So we'll throw some Tony's on there. I don't know how much heat you like, Cliff, but I'm not gonna overdo it. And so I've got my, uh, my toothpicks here, and that's just gonna help with the uh, bacon to stick. I soak them in water so they don't burn on the grill. And you just start wrapping, it's, it's pretty simple, folks. Cooking is not hard, people. It's really not. And uh, if you got too much bacon on one end, you can go ahead and cut it. You just want enough to get around. So I need a toothpick to it. I don't know if you can see this, you want to get in here. That way people can see how I'm doing this. Some things too you can expect when you come hunting at the Little Arrowhead Ranch is also, a uh, lot like I say, lodging and meals are included, so we cook all the meals out there. Yep. Uh, so you can enjoy eating some of the things like this too while you're out there. Uh, like I say, we do all the cooking, uh, provide all the meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, yeah, last time we went, Cliff made a pretty sweet, uh, what was it, like a stew? I made a real good stew for yeah, you last year. That was that was real good. It had, what did it have in it? You had chicken gizzards? I had, had chicken gizzards in there. I had beef. I had uh, squash. I had carrots, potatoes, green beans, corn, rice. A yep. little, bit, little bit of everything. Had it all. <laughs> My dad doesn't eat dinner normally, and he actually ate dinner that day. <laughs> so, yeah, so you just want to go ahead and bacon wrap this thing. You can never have too much bacon. I've got like three packs of bacon sitting in the fridge, so. You can never have too, too much bacon. And you just go ahead and weave it. All right, so I've got it wrapped in bacon all the way around. I got a pretty good, uh, I got a pretty good wrap on it. Sometimes you can overdo it and the bacon just kind of like starts falling off if you got too much. So I just like enough to just cover it a little. So then I'm just gonna give a light dusting on the outside, on both sides, pat that in. Looks delicious. It's gonna be. You can't buy that at HEB. No. <laughs> HEB, I need a sponsorship. Come on. This is HEB bacon. <laughs> Had almost everything on here is HEB. So, uh, depending on how hot you like it, it's gonna be up to you on how much uh, Cajun seasoning you put on it. You can put anything you want on it. I mean, if you don't wanna do Cajun seasoning, you can do lemon pepper, you can do whatever. It's up to you. But this is how I like it. So, we're gonna get this thing on the grill before we start prepping the next step. And uh, so let's go ahead and go outside and throw this thing on the grill. All right, so we are here at the grill. Uh, this is just a gas grill. All you gas grill haters, quit being haters. I don't care what you say, I love my gas grill. Uh, you can't put this thing on charcoal. Uh, it's gonna taste just as good. Personally, I'm a gas grill guy. I do love barbecue. I love all that, but I like this on a gas grill. So. Uh, what I did, I stuck it just a cookie sheet down here because I'm going to stick it on the top rack, on the rib rack or whatever they call it. That way the drippings don't cause flare-ups and all that stuff. It's just to help from all that. So, I'm just going to place this up on top. You want to keep your, my grill, grill has a thermometer and all that. Uh, right now it's pretty hot. I try to get it down around 350 and basically cook it like an oven. So, I'm going to let that sit out here. Keep an eye on my heat. And then we'll, we'll we'll come check on it here and then here and then. All right. So what Cliff's doing now? He's cutting these. He's cutting the other pieces of backstrap into. I get there about what quarter inch, half inch pieces. I cut them. I, I cut them pretty thin. I cut mine about a quarter inch. You know, no more than a half inch, half inch thick. Uh, that way they cook pretty fast and uh, they're real easy not to overcook. Uh, so this is Cliff's favorite. This is your favorite way to. To, to make the backstrap. I love, I love frying deer backstrap. That's pretty much almost the only way out. <laughs> I eat deer backstrap is, is frying it. Uh, I do like the bacon wrap version. I'm interested to try that. Uh, looks very good, but this is my personal favorite to, yes. uh, to fry it. 
So he's, we're going to get a batter ready for that. I'll show you how to do all that. Uh, and uh, so we're going to let Piff finish cutting these up. And like you can see, he's getting rid of these. I'm cutting off all this, you know, all this gristle. All this gristle, all this. I trimmed the slimy stuff off of it. I trimmed the uh, the silver skin off it beforehand. So just get as much of that gristle off. It's just like a steak, you know. You don't want that in there. So trim as much as you of that stuff as you can off, and keep the good, good, good. This is medallion. This is a meat medallion. This is this is pure joy and happiness. Look, it even looks like a little heart. There you go. And these only take about five or ten minutes to fry, and yeah, they're, they're quick. They're real quick. It'll be real good. So yeah, just slice them up just like that. Uh, some people tenderize them, hit them with the mat, with the, the meat tenderizer. Some people don't. It's just really, it's a personal preference. So uh, we're gonna leave them like this. I don't think we're gonna pound them out. Uh, and then we'll, we'll get these fried up. So we'll finish doing this and we'll get to the frying. All right. So Cliff cut, cut the back strap and a little bit diet. And so while we're waiting for the other back strap to get done sitting on the, on the grill, we need a side and this is one of those things I've heard mixed reviews on about this, so I really, really, really need to know, uh, is, do y'all want to see sides in my videos or not? Because you're getting it in this one, but I've had both sides tell me yes and no. So, uh, we need some sides. So, I'm going to do one, and we're going to do mac and cheese, but this is a cheesy, 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 extra cheesy mac and cheese. So, uh, all I've got, the bacon that I had left over, it was about a little less than a cup, I'm going to use that. I just bought a bag of H-E-B uh, elbow macaroni. I've got some evaporated milk and some good old American processed cheese. That's the best cheese you can use for this because it's just cheesy and sticky. Uh, so all we're gonna do, I don't know if you wanna open up these, these cans. So we got three cans, these are 12 ounce cans uh, of cheese. I've got a pot here. You can throw them in this, in this pot. We've got medium high heat. These are two holes, so they, so they uh, air out air out uh, or whatever you want to call it. So I'm just gonna throw those in there. I have never used this stuff before. I've never used it. It's good in like oatmeal and and all that. Uh, so this is one of those things you just really gotta kind of gauge and it's really how cheesy you want it. Uh, you can add regular milk to this, whole milk, whatever, two percent, which is fake milk, like Ron Swanson says. Uh, so I got three cans of that. Then I've got two blocks. How big are those? It's like what pound? I think these are yeah one pound each. Yeah, so we got two pounds of cheese. So we're just gonna slice those up. We're gonna throw them in, and then we're gonna we're gonna work these in. So uh, I'll bring you over here closer to the pot so you can see, and we'll start throwing this cheese in. All right. So before we get the cheese sauce going. Uh, we're gonna throw some macaroni. We got to get our macaroni elbows into the pot of water. So get you a boiling pot of water. Throw the your macaroni in there. I got two bags. I always buy too much. Hope you like macaroni, Cliff. I love macaroni. And you might get to take some home. We got plenty of cheese here. <laughs> yeah, I bought like four pounds or three pounds of cheese. So. Throw this in. Oh, I need to salt my water real quick. I should have done that first, but I forgot. And so I'm just gonna salt it. Okay. Throw this in. And I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna let that sit. And let it finish. And then now we're gonna go ahead and get our uh, get our cheese sauce started. So here we go. All right, so here we got our evaporated milk. We've got it on just a low heat. Uh, you don't want to get it too, too hot right away. We got a little steam coming off it now. So Cliff went ahead and cut our our cheese into little strips, and we're just going to start adding them. All right, guys, so it's been in for about, uh, I guess, about six minutes or so. Uh, cheese, I've got two pounds of cheese in it right now. Cheese is coming together. It's melting it's getting ooey and gooey and yeah this is good old american processed cheese the best this is a uh take on old maddie matheson's mac and cheese with a big dan uh spin on it it's pretty good i've had it before i've done it one time before so wanted to show you guys so yeah just let the cheese melt we'll check back in on it 
and see if we got to add more. I've got a whole nother pound of cheese if I need it. But yeah, it's getting there. You just got to do it nice and slow. You don't want to burn anything. So we'll check back in on it here in a minute. All right, we're checking back in on it. We are almost there. Look at that ooey gooey goodness. Cliff, you're gonna, socks are gonna be knocked off. You never had a cheese sauce like this. So yeah, we're, so the consistency you want, this was basically two and a half pounds of cheese and three cans of, uh, of uh, evaporated milk. So you see, we can still got some chunks in there, but that's coming together. But the key is low and slow, keep it moving, don't let it burn. And uh, you'll get there. You have to be patient with this with this cheese sauce, but it's all worth it. I don't know if this would work with any other kind of cheese because the American cheese is so processed, and that's what really makes it uh, what really makes it nice and gooey. But that's about the consistency you want right there. You can see it coming off the spatula. It's a nice light stream. So yeah, that's pretty much ready. Uh, so we're gonna check our noodles, and uh, I mean pull them out i'm gonna pop this in the oven with some shredded cheese on top just to kind of give it a little toasted uh top to it and then we're gonna be good i really don't like putting like crackers and like all that on top of my mac and cheese so yeah, this is about ready so that's what you want right there a nice steady stream of cheese it's a river of cheese so i'm gonna pull this off check my my noodles my macaroni elbows and then I'll show you what we do to pop it in the oven and then we'll go check in on that back strap the bacon wrap all right folks so we're about to check on the bacon wrapped back strap that we uh, put on first and right now it's looking good we're almost there uh, all I'm really looking for is that uh, bacon to get crispy and that's pretty much it so right now I'm gonna close that back up go back inside and finish Doing the, the mac the mac and cheese and then Cliff's gonna get rolling on the uh, on the chicken fried steak. Okay, so now the cheese sauce is ready. I put all the macaroni into this big pot because I'm gonna end up putting it in the oven. Uh, so I'm gonna pour it in. Cliff's gonna stir it in. We got our bacon there. We can throw the bacon in, and I'm gonna bring our pot of cheesy goodness in. Pour it in here. Throw the bacon in. That's about half a cup of bacon. So it looks like we're gonna have enough uh, mac and cheese here to feed about a family of eight, Dan. Or two dads. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna label some of that in. Mix that in. Get up in here. Show the people. Let's I'm gonna show the people the cheesy goodness. It looks really good. Of this cheesy mac and cheese. Oh yes. You ain't never had mac and cheese like this. All right, here comes the big pour off. Try not to burn yourself, Cliff. Right. Get that mixed in pretty good. Probably have to add some more here yeah. in a second. That is a lot of mac and cheese. <laughs> There's gonna be leftovers. <laughs> See, the thing with me, I cook a lot. All right, make a lot of food. And anybody will tell you that ever, if I barbecue, I like barbecue to feed for, you know, four or five families and and then leftovers for like two weeks. <laughs> so, yeah, that's cheesy goodness right there. I'll make it a mess. But, oh yeah, that's real good. So, I'm gonna add a little bit more. So that's what we've got left so far. We may end up using it all. Just making a mess too. <laughs> all right. Oh yeah, that's probably. You think that's enough cheese, Cliff? I think. Well, yeah, maybe a little bit more. Let's put more, more, more cheese. More. I hope you're not lactose intolerant. All right, that should be good. Okay, let me let's put this. Let me clean this off. Clean up all this cheese that we've got everywhere. Oh yeah. Okay. So then what I'm gonna do, I've got about half a pound or half a block left of 
the American cheese. I'm just gonna shred some right on top. All right, that's good. Because more cheese, more better. And we're just gonna let it sit on top. We're not gonna we're not gonna stir it in. We're gonna let it sit there on top. And fun fact, did you know it's easier to shred cheese when it's cold? That's why I put it in the fridge. It's a lot easier to shred cheese when it's cold. You know, there's a million different devices that shred cheese. And I really like the grater. Like, it don't get no better than the grater. So I've got the oven at 350. We're gonna pop it in the oven. I don't know how long. I'll figure it out when I put it in because we're just gonna let this get kind of golden brown. And if you like cheese, I hope you like cheese. But yeah, hope you're not lactose intolerant. That's all I know. We're gonna get all this cheese. All right, so I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna finish uh, uh, grating this cheese. We're gonna pop this thing in the oven. All right, so now we're gonna get rolling on our chicken fried version of this. So what I've got, I've got, this is a big mix because what I'm doing, I'm using the, the, the same measurements and everything that I use for my fried chicken. Uh, so I've got six cups of flour here. You won't need that much. You can cut this down, but I'm just doing what I know because uh, I can always save this and uh, reuse it. So I've got six cups of flour and I've got, let's see if I remember all of these. <laughs> I've got coriander, maize, not maize, not corn, mace, like the spray. Uh, paprika and smoked paprika. There's two different kinds. Ground cloves, poultry seasoning, and whole fennel seed. What else am I missing? Cayenne. And cayenne. I got four tablespoons. And this is all one tablespoon, and I got four tablespoons of cayenne in here. So I'm going to add all that to our flour. And first, we'll give that a mix. And then Cliff's going to show us the trick he's got. And you can use a plastic bag to mix it. So yeah, I, I, like I said, I always, I usually pour all my flour into a Ziploc bag first, and then you can just add your seasonings into that and mix it all together. Keeps it in that Ziploc bag, kind of keeps the mess down a little bit. And um, you can always taste your, I know a lot of people don't, you got to, to me, you got to taste your food. So, you get a little taste, you can see if it's too hot, say hello to my little friend. Uh, <laughs> if it was too hot, we're grabbing it all over me. Uh, that's got a good, that's got a good flavor to it right there. You know what I have seen, Cliff, with that, with uh, people leaving it in different, not just any kind of meat, but really any meat, and they'll leave it in uh, like pickle juice. Oh, really? Let it brine in pickle juice, and that gives a little extra just tanginess to it. To I haven't tried. I tried it with chicken. I haven't tried it with with the uh, back chef or anything. Now we don't have too much to fry, so that's probably plenty of flour there. Uh, we'll so we gotta take that off to the side. Now seasonings I, I use. I I'm pretty simple. I'm pretty basic. I'll just kind of throw basic. some salt, basic. salt, pepper, and some season oil in there. Pretty much. That's pretty much all I use. You're basic. Uh, then we got. Then we got a bowl of milk here that we'll use. Uh, we're gonna crack a couple of eggs and throw these couple of eggs in there and mix it up. And that just helps the uh, flour stick a little bit better to your, to your meat. And we'll mix that up a little bit. So we'll get a spatula. Yeah, we're gonna do this spatula. Yeah, use that one. Or you yeah, wanna we'll just mix that up a little whisk. bit. No, that's fine, man. We'll just mix that up a little bit. Get those eggs mixed up in there. So you let your meat soak? Now, I'll throw all this meat in here and what this kind of helps do is uh, kind of pulls out a little bit more of that blood, kind of takes a little bit of that gamey taste out as well and just, just helps it give it a little bit better flavor. So right now I've got the mac and cheese in the oven. Uh, it was at 350 for about five minutes and I turned it off because I'm gonna let it sit in there. I'm gonna let that cheese just Melt slowly melt on top and stay warm. Now these are our medallions here we cut. We'll just throw all these in there. And once we get them all in there, we'll just let that soak in there. 
for about 10 minutes or so, mix it up real good. I'm gonna get our oil going. And you'll notice your, your milk, you know, you'll get that blood color kind of look to it. Start pulling out some of that blood. But we'll let it sit in there for 10, 10 minutes or so before we add it into our bag of flour. So here, I've got just a pan, this is probably a three, four inch pan. Medium high heat, vegetable oil, that's all you need. You don't need to fill it all the way up. Just get enough to coat the medallions or the pieces we cut. And remember, like I said on the first video, don't burn the house down. You should have a fire extinguisher and baking soda available to you at all times to take care of that fire. So you wanna let those sit for about 10 minutes. And while we're still, we wanna get our oil to 350, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And, uh, and uh, we'll get you moved over to the, to the stove and we'll start frying these. Well, we'll show you how to batter them and then we'll fry them up. So we're gonna let these sit for about 10 minutes. So we'll be right back. All right, so we let our medallions soak in the milk and eggs here for about 10 minutes. 10 minutes or so. Uh, now we're just going to pull them out and throw them into the bag of flour here. We're going to keep a wet hand and a dry hand. Wet hand and a dry hand. Makes life so much easier. Just throw them all in there, add them all in there. Make sure we get them all. We got the oil going, getting it up to 350 degrees. That's all. Get them all. All right, then all you gotta do is close your Ziploc bag there and start shaking. Get it all mixed up. Close the bag. Close the bag. Make sure the bag is closed. Make sure you don't drop the bag. <laughs> bag flies open, flowers. It's probably better that you're doing that because. <laughs> I'll bust the bag, there'll be flour everywhere, I'll get yelled at. It'll be a mess. Just get everything real nice and mixed up in there. Alright, then we're good. Then we'll just kind of let that sit a little bit longer. Let that sit for another five or ten minutes or so, and then we'll add it to the fryer. Yep, we're waiting for our we're waiting for our oil to come up to temperature. Once it gets here, we'll go ahead and start throwing them in. The uh, Bacon wrapper was just about done, so this is all coming together zenfully, and uh, hopefully it's all done at the same time the way, the way it's looking. The mac and cheese is looking fantastic. All right, so we got our oil up to 350 degrees. We're gonna throw the first one in, and like I said in my last video, when that piece hits the oil, it should give you a nice sizzle, and because uh, if it, there you go, just yeah. like that. If you don't get that, it's going to get soggy. And so you might have to adjust your heat a little bit uh, as you're putting the colder meat into the, into the oil. And don't, like, don't overcrowd your pan too much. This is probably get, now that's probably about it for right now. Don't make it overflow. You'll catch your house on fire. All right. So they're just about done. They're nice and golden brown. We got our plate with... Uh, some paper towels. Yeah, your paper towels help soak up some of that grease. Soak up some so show the camera how the, the color of those. Just get so. that nice little golden brown on there, nice and. And they'll dry out a little bit. There. They'll get crispier with the, the longer they uh, sit there and get rid of that oil. Kind of let that little bit of that grease drip off. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. So yeah, get those out of the pan, put them on a paper towel, with a, a plate with a paper towel. And oh yeah, those are gonna be real good. So we're gonna finish cooking the rest of them. And we'll be All right, so we're back out here. We're gonna pull this back strap off. And like I said, all we wanted was to get that nice bacon, nice and crispy. It's got just enough crisp to it. We're gonna go ahead and pull this thing off. And put it on our cutting board and get a handle on it. Oh yeah, there we go. So that's gonna go inside. We're gonna let that rest for a few minutes, and we're gonna cut into it. All right, folks, 
here it is, the spread. We've got the mac and cheese out of the oven, and that was hot. Uh, then we've got our, our uh, bacon wrap backstrap that is that was been resting for about 10 minutes. We just pulled it off the grill. We've got our uh, fried backstrap, my gravy that actually didn't suck. And uh, so we're going, we're gonna cut out this backstrap first. We're gonna let you see it. And uh, so let's get up in here. Let's make this first cut. Let's see if I did all right. So, make the delicious. first cut. And like I said, still got a little pink to it. I'm cutting into a, don't forget, don't forget to take out your toothpicks. Don't serve it with your toothpicks. But personally, I'd like it a little redder than it is, but it's not too bad. So let's see, can you get up on that? It's got a little bit of red to it. Not too much. I'd like it a little redder than that, but I think we can make do with that. So, we'll cut a couple of pieces of that. So that's better. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's good. That end piece was a little more done, but this is what we want. It kind of looks like you know what you're doing, Dan. Yeah. Sometimes I do. <laughs> a lot of times I don't. Watch your toothpicks. Don't serve the toothpicks to the guests. So, yeah. So that's what you you want right that looks there. Delicious. Whoops. Still juicy. You can see the juices in that thing and then uh so yeah take the toothpicks out so we've got our mac and cheese here you play cliff i'm gonna hook you up here with some all right give me going let's right. see the mac and cheese let's get let's get the first scoop of mac and cheese little scoop little scoop there you go <laughs> a big damn little scoop or a, okay and let's what, what am i doing let's hook you up with a, a what piece of, you want give me a couple of those i want it from the middle there okay. you go give me one more there. there you go and then you can get some fruit Throw your fried backstrap on here. You get my plate. Mm -hmm. Don't forget your gravy. Throw some gravy on there. This is what you people wanted to see me stuff my face. Oh, that's good. So, maybe you'll hire me as a camp cook, Cliff. Maybe. One day. Well, you're out there pretty much a few times a year now, so. All right, let's try this. Let's get some gravy. My big dance. Wow, wasn't too bad gravy. It's a little thick, but it's not horrible. So first, we're gonna take our toothpick out so we don't eat it. Way to. <laughs> so I'm gonna give this a try. Let's uh, let's try it, Cliff. Backstrap is real tender cutting into it. Good stuff. Mm. Not too much, not too much heat from the Tony's. Really good. I tender. Bacon makes everything better. So that was pretty good. Yeah, not overcooked, nice and yeah. tender. I'd still like it a little a little redder, but it's still pretty good. So let's try this this fried. Oh, oh yeah. My cheese looks like chicken fried steak. You get a little mac and cheese on mine. I don't know if you can see that. You can bring it in closer if you want. But with all those spices that I put in there, it really, really does a lot more than just salt and pepper with it. Whoops. That's real good. So let's try some of this awesome mac and cheese. Like heart attack cheese. mac and cheese. Is it good? Yeah, the bacon in there is good too. I think. It's actually not too cheesy. We have so much mac and cheese. Not too cheesy! <laughs> Bit dance, not too cheesy. Cheesiest mac and cheese you've ever had in your life. Yeah, that's good. So what do you think, Cliff? Give me your ratings. What do you think? The, uh... The fries is really good. The seasonings, I really yeah. like the seasonings. Never thought you'd put all that seasoning mm -hmm. in there. It all works together. It's magic. This is real tender too. More more tender than the than the bacon wrap back yeah. trap, but bacon wrap strap uh, bacon wrap back strap still has really good flavor to it too. Like I said, not overcooked. I'd still like it a little redder. A little redder, yeah. A little redder. But it was not too bad. So uh so yeah, so Cliff, thanks for coming on. I'm not going to shake your hand because my hands are dirty. Uh, but people, do not forget.
Go to the Hunter Stravaganza in San Antonio at the Freeman Coliseum Expo Hall. Go see Cliff and everybody from the Little Arrowhead Ranch there. Come see us, Book a Hunt. Yeah, Book a Hunt with these, with these guys. They're awesome, it's fun. We'll uh, cook some meals like this out there too. Yeah, you'll see some videos from, from us out there. Uh, it's a whole lot of fun out there. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to this page. Subscribe, smash that like button. Subscribe to Big Dan Feast. Uh, hit the little bell that notifies you when I put up a video. I'm trying to do this at least bi-weekly for y'all. Uh, I'd like to do a lot more content, but go over to Instagram for Big Dan Feast, at Big Dan Feasts, and I'll put the link to my Instagram there uh, in the description. And that's where I need you to, to like my page or follow my page and tag two friends. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a video out there for this giveaway. On that, on that video for the giveaway, I need you to tag two friends, like my page, and like Little Arrowhead Ranch page. Sign up and win those gift cards. And you get you get you get entered into a chance to, to win a $50 gift card from our good friends at the Little Arrowhead Ranch. And uh, you will be entered when you do that. You'll be entered. Uh, we've got a hopper. It's like a digital thing. We put all your names in it. It randomly selects. You know, it'll be four people, and that's who you're. That's who you're gonna get. Who, who you're gonna be? The winners. And uh, I will DM you, get a hold of you if I know you. Whatever. I'll mail you your gift card. Whatever. Even if you're out of state or whatever, I'm gonna get you a gift card. So we really, really appreciate Cliff and everybody over at Little Arrowhead Ranch for the for the gift cards and for coming on today and enjoying the food. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a, a this is a big dad meal right here. This is what I want this channel to be right here. This is good stuff. So folks, Cliff, you got anything for him? Like I said, get on there, get onto his Instagram, get onto his YouTube channel, subscribe there. Come see me this weekend, Hunters of Stravaganza. Uh, come book your hunt. Hey, enjoy the videos. We'll probably do a, a video coming up in September, dove hunting coming up. We'll probably do a video out at the ranch. Yep. Doing dove wraps. Doing yep. uh, dove wraps. So as long as I can get see. there, we will do it. So yeah, so really thanks a lot to you, everybody else at Little Arrowhead Ranch. Uh, check them out. I'll have all their info up here for you. And as always, folks, thanks for watching. Tight lines, set sights, and happy folks. We'll see you next time on Big